For this next activity, I find this really exciting because we're going to do something that not many people know about. So Paul Klee is well known for all his painting and his drawing, but what a lot of people don't know is that he made puppets. And these puppets were made for his son Felix. And he started off by making one and his son loved them so, so much that he made 50. So 50 finger puppets and they're in the Punch and Judy style. They're very naive and primitive and they're made with plaster and they're simplistic and they're very, very effective and I love them. So the puppets were called names like Dr. Death, the policeman, the crocodile, the devil, the devil's grandmother, sort of quite dark names, but I think maybe because he had a son and they would have played games and they were the characters. So this unit of work that we're about to do is sculpture and it's a big unit of work. So I'm going to break it down into three sections. Uh, before we start, I'm going to go through all the materials. Uh, this module would be to, for the grade fives and sixes, upper level school. Okay, so you are going to need, we've got these pyramid shapes, they stuck inside, one of these, or a set of these. You're going to need masking tape, newspaper, yarn, mod rock, plaster, string, cut up spare material or waste material or any material, markers, black pens, scissors, paint. I'm going to use Vipons and Vipons has a built-in acrylic so that means it has a, a shine and it also makes it water resistant. The, the thing you need to remember with Vipons, if you use it, if the students get it on their clothes, it doesn't come out. So the students need to be aware of that. And also your brushes need to be washed properly when you use it because the gloss will solidify. If you don't have Vipons and you have normal paint, that's not a problem. You can just use any acrylic paint. If you want the shiny effect, you put super gloss over it. So you can use a normal acrylic paint and then super gloss and then you can work over the super gloss. And the super gloss is a water-based gloss. Your brushes clean with just soap and water and that will give you that nice shiny finished effect if you want it. Or you can just use acrylic paint and not worry about it. Okay, so we're really focusing on shape and form because we're working in a 3D format and some people find this quite difficult. So the techniques I'm going to show you are simple techniques and all the students should be able to do it. So we're going to start off with your pyramid. I'm just going to move this out the way. Newspaper, yarn and masking tape. So just these things to start off with. Newspaper and masking tape are gold. They are absolute gold. You can make anything. So we're going to make a head because we're going to use this as the body. We just need to be aware of size because we're working in 3D. We don't want it to be top heavy. So I do talk to the students about balance and weight and that's introducing your mathematics. So with the head, they need, the students need to make a head shape. I'm just making my head shape by folding the paper like that. That's how simple it was. So I've just folded it and I've made a head. And then you just stick that on. And now the head is just going to wrap around like that. There we go. Now just to make it a little bit more complicated, that's the basic head shape and body. If you wanted something coming out and Klee did this with one of his, and I've done it with one of mine. He did these, this shape coming out of his head. I copied this from Klee's puppets. So I'm going to show you how to make this shape attached to the head. 
So again, I just took the newspaper. I might take two sheets. I'll take two and I need one, and if I take one, I'll need two. But we'll see. Okay, so I've taken two. I'm going to go this way, I think. I don't want it too long. And I'm just folding it. Really simple. Again, get the masking tape. And this is an armature. And what that means is it's the skeleton of your 3D project. That's how I explain it to the students. I say this is an armature, giving them the correct terminology and it's the skeleton of the work you're about to build on top of. And if a student's having a problem sticking and holding it on, they can help each other. And you see it's pretty rough and ready. I'm not really being precious with it. And I think that's something really good to point out to the students. I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to make some good shapes. Right, so now that we have the head and this shape, which could be hair or a hat or whatever I like, you can add some string to make hair. So I love this yarn because it's natural. So I just take some and wrap it around my fingers like this. Take the masking tape and wrap that around the yarn. Just to give it extra height. Okay, so this is the armature. We have the body, we have the head, and that is part one. So that's the end of those materials. It's all stuck together pretty well. That's gonna hold. And I'm gonna put that aside and turn to the mod rock. So part two is adding the mod rock. Now the mod rock, the plaster, is this is the exact equipment that Paul Klee liked to use to make these puppets. So you can discuss that with your students. We're actually using the same materials which I find really interesting. When I first started teaching I would cut my mod rock up into finger size and I was quite stingy with the students and it took them a long time and we had a bit of failure. I wanted them to wrap and layer. I've since learned that that was ridiculous and I never ever do that anymore and now I give them good chunks and different sizes. So when I cut up the mod rock and the students help me cut it up, I make some smaller pieces and I make some longer pieces and I also give the students scissors so if they need a particular shape they can cut it themselves and I'm a lot more giving with the materials and that has helped a lot. So I'm gonna cut some bigger shapes and some smaller shapes and then put them to the side. talk about the mod rock for a minute in case you haven't used it before. If you haven't used mod rock before you're in for a real treat. Um, this is a plaster, you wet it to activate it and then you smooth it over with your fingers and basically all the holes will disappear and something that I always explain to the students to make something stronger you need to put it over joints and also you need to overlap so you wouldn't put mod rock against mod rock like that, when you're sculpting, you would put a piece and you would overlap the next piece to give it strength. So I'm gonna dip my mod rock into the water and students should have water that's near them so they're not dripping all over the table getting the dry mod rock wet. They're not gonna start at the top because then it'll become top heavy and then it can fall over. So they start at the bottom join, which is here. So I'm gonna wrap that around. I've got a bit of blue on my finger so I can see it coming off. Right, and now I'm just going to gently 
I, I say, I call this activating it, that's what I say to the students. Activate the mod rock by rubbing it and if it's not wet enough, you can see you can just dip your finger gently, not too wet. And I make sure all the little holes are sort of rubbed in before I add my next piece. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to get my next piece. Do the same. Just let it drip for a second. And I'm going to overlap and go over half. And then I'm just going to work my way up the sculpture. So now the plaster has dried, we're going to put our first layer of paint. So I said I was using the Vipons which has a gloss in it, because it's got a gloss in it you need to make sure you always give the paints a really good shake. I love these paints because they also make the work waterproof. making sure the brushes go in water and are cleaned straight away afterwards. So I'm just going to paint the front first. And this, this paint is really good quality, making sure I get in all those little crevices making sure the students do a really good paint job. Although if they don't, I don't think it will matter either because the roughness of this activity, I think enhances it. I'm going to turn that over. And I'm gonna paint the back because it's a 3D object. So you need to address all sides And I know with my students, when they say they're finished, and I check their work, they haven't always finished. So I walk around and make sure that they're doing a good paint job and not just rushing. Okay, and making sure again, because it's 3D, I get on top. And I'm going to, I don't really want to wet my brush because I don't want the paint to thin. So I'm just gonna put a dry brush on the newspaper. I'm going to put the deep red stripe. I'm doing a stripe because I think they look really effective. The students can paint their work however they want. So I'm just going to put two stripes in. Again, making sure I address the back because it's a sculpture. OK, 
okay, when I finish my stripes, I'm just going to look at my sculpture and see if I can put the red anywhere else. And I might put it on the eyebrow. So I'm going to paint the top of the eyebrow and the bottom of the eyebrow. I think that's it. So now I need to let my paint dry and if you still have part of the lesson left, the students could use that time in sketching out rough copies for different faces. So now we've come to the last part, the decoration. I'm going to simply use a black marker to finish the face, put the eyes, the eyebrows, beard. Remember these are quite primitive and naive so I'm trying to keep with that sort of feel. And you need some material, scarves, socks, ripped up material, anything you can get your hands on. And the yarn, or you might want to go for some fancier string or different textured string. More materials, then you have more variety in the work. I'm not trying to be perfect, I want it to be a little bit grotesque. So I'm going to pop the eyes in. I was going to paint the nose as a yellow beak, but I've just left that now. But so I'm going to just do the eye. And another eye. And I'm going to do some black marks for eyebrows. just to give it a bit of texture. I'm going to get some sort of eyelashes. Very, very simple, which is what I want. A little bit of wet paint. Oh. I'm going to give some sort of beard. Just to give it some more texture. And I can do a little bit more decoration later if I like, but that's enough for the moment. So the wrapping, we haven't put any arms on. But the same way we did the headpiece at the start, if you wanted to have arms, you could, you could put arms on because these are finger pump puppets, but they're sort of giant finger puppets. You can put your whole hand in. So the next part is wrapping with material. So you just take any material and you wrap. and you have it however you like then you just get your string your cord your yarn and you just wrap it around to hold it together okay so I'm going to tie that up and just a knot that's going to hold it all together. Trip them off. So there you have it, your Paul Klee giant finger puppet. And for display, I just think all the variety of the students' individual work lined up is just going to look absolutely brilliant. And then if you wanted to, you could take it a step further. You could have puppet shows, you could film the students, you could make conversations, and you could turn that into a play-based lesson using their imagination, conversation. So, Paul Cleese, Puppets.